My apologies. All right. Um, we will start the permit review committee. Um, today's date is Thursday, September 3rd, 2020. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'll do the roll call of uh, commission members of uh, the permit review committee. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jekovic. Here. Um, Commissioner Hughes. Present. Uh, Commissioner Osmond. Present. And I am Commissioner Wong. We do have a, uh, we do have a quorum. Instead of our committee, right? Yep. Okay. Um, earlier this year, Governor Pritzker signed Public Act 101-0640, making certain amendments to the Open Meetings Act, so that we, along with other boards and commissions, can continue to host virtual meetings during this COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those conditions is that Chairman Leon, as head of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks, determines that an in-person, sorry, in-person meeting of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks is not practical or prudent. I want to make sure that our virtual meeting meets all the conditions of the Open Meetings Act as amended. Therefore, I want to state pursuant to the newly created Section 7E2 of the Open Meetings Act, the Chairman Leon determined that an in-person meeting of this permit review committee of the Chicago of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks is not practical or prudent. Similarly, Chairman Leon made a determination pursuant to the newly created Section 7E5 that because of the disaster as declared by the governor, it is unfeasible for at least one member of the Commission on Chicago Landmarks or its Chief Administrative Officer or its Chief Legal Officer to be physically present at the meeting place. Pursuant to a resolution adopted by the Commission on Chicago Landmarks, on June 4th, 2020, regarding the Chairman's emergency rule-making powers, Chairman Leon issued emergency rules governing the conduct of remote public commission meetings and provisions for remote public participation. Effective June 23rd, 2020, in response to the COVID-19 emergency. These rules were posted on the commission's website. In line with these emergency rules, today's regular Permit review committee meeting is a virtual meeting being simulcast to the general public via live streaming. Permit review committee uh, meetings have been held virtually since May of this year. Meetings are structured to minimize the chances for technical difficulties. Members of the general public have been encouraged to submit written statements in advance of the meeting. We received one email from Ed Tominga, chairman of the Preservation uh, and Development Committee of the Wicker Park Committee in support of the staff recommendations for agenda item number two, the proposed rehabilitation of 1420 North Milwaukee. And this was posted on the commission's website. Members of the public desiring to speak at today's meetings were required to re register before the meeting, but no one has registered. Applicants and the representatives as well as aldermen were asked to contact staff if they desired to speak and they will be able to do so after the staff presentation on a specific project. So let's start this with the approval of the meetings of the previous meeting. This was the regular meeting of August 6, 2020. Um, I'd like to request a motion to approve those minutes. And anybody? So moved. Your hand? Uh, I'm sorry, who was that? Commissioner Hughes. Uh, Commissioner Hughes uh, uh, made the motion. Second. Second. Uh, Commissioner Jakovich, seconds. Yeah. Commissioner Osmond, are you in favor? Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm Commissioner Wong, I vote yes. The motion carries unanimously. The minutes are approved. First item on today's agenda is, a, uh, is at 62 East Riverwalk South. This is in the 42nd Ward of uh, Alderman Riley's. Uh, this is the Michigan Avenue Bridge and Wacker Drive Esplanade proposed installation of a new 30 foot tall 
TFRC clad elevator enclosure with a curving sanding seam zinc roof to access the river walk. And I'd like to call on uh, Larry to make that presentation, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Michigan Avenue Bridge and Wacker Drive Esplanade uh, were designated a Chicago landmark in 1991. Uh, the section of uh, Riverwalk west of the Michigan Avenue Bridge was initiated as part of the Wacker Drive reconstruction of the 1990s. Uh, in 2009, the commission approved uh, construction of an underbridge walkway at the Michigan, uh, Michigan Avenue Bridge. Uh, expansion of the Riverwalk has occurred in phases with six additional blocks added after 2012. The city of Chicago is proposing to improve accessibility of the river walk for visitors and vendors through the installation of an elevator. Uh, in 2018, a stair at that location was removed uh, and the new elevator design has been submitted to the PRC uh, as it was available. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, the site is on the south side of the river uh, between the Wabash and Michigan Avenue Bridge. Uh, there is a wide ramp that slopes down from Wabash Avenue uh, to the location of the proposed uh, elevator. Uh, and you can see the photo on the upper right is uh, a view down that ramp. And obviously the uh, area outlined with the red box, that's the location and this is currently what the uh, what the site looks like. Uh, the applicant has designed the project to be separate from the Wacker Drive Esplanade, so there would be no need to remove existing railings or balusters at the street level. Uh, the proposed elevator enclosure is approximately 13 feet wide, 19 feet in depth, and from the uh, Riverwalk grade it's about 30 feet in height and about 20 feet from the, uh, the ramp level. Uh, the elevator will allow visitors approaching from Wabash Avenue to descend to the river level, but it will also serve vendors approaching from Lower Wacker Drive. Uh, the enclosure has been designed to utilize flat rustications, similar in size, spacing, and profile as those found on the Esplanade and historic bridge houses. Uh, the corners project slightly, which breaks up the mass of the wall plane. Uh, the top of the enclosure incorporates a simplified projecting cornice. Uh, the next slide shows the west and east elevations along with the configuration of the doors. Uh, next slide are some sections to show the internal configuration as well as its relationship to the Wacker Drive Esplanade. And you can see that outlined in this right image in gray. Uh, as I mentioned, the applicants are proposing a curved standing seam metal roof. Uh, the size of that roof is required to allow proper functioning of the mechanical systems, including ventilation, as well as maintenance access. Uh, the standing seam zinc roof is proposed to have a dark gray color, uh, and staff recommends that that will help it to blend in with the historic features of the district, and that it be approved subject to staff review and approval of material sample prior to order and installation. So the next slide uh, shows a series of renderings that the applicants have provided. Uh, the cladding for the upper portion of the elevator enclosure is proposed to be glass fiber reinforced concrete to match adjacent masonry, and the lower portion of the enclosure is proposed to be cast stone to match the adjacent granite base. Uh, these materials have previously been used for many of the repairs and expansions of the Esplanade and the Riverwalk. Uh, staff recommends approval of GFRC and cast stone, again subject to review and approval of material samples prior to order and installation. So uh, basically this is our recommendation for approval. Again, we're, we're uh, recommending that uh, we review and approve material samples for both the cladding and the uh, roof uh, material. Um, that's it for my presentation. I, I believe the applicants are here as well, uh, if you have any questions for them. Thank you, Larry. Does the committee have any questions for Larry at this time? Nobody is raising their hands. Um, I, I guess the one question I would have is, uh, what is the schedule on this? Or is that something we should be asking the applicant? Yeah, they can definitely address that better than I can, but I, I know that they're hoping to uh, move forward with getting this project in the pipeline to uh, in this current budget year. Okay, thank you. 
Hi, Ernie. It's Michelle. Um, and yes, as Larry said, we are trying, we're hoping we can get it completed this year in this budget cycle. But of course, as you know, with the uh, economics of the city being challenging, that might might be delayed. Okay. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Uh, and thanks for jumping in. Uh, I have to ask you to uh, state your full name and who you're with. For the record. Sure. My name is Michelle Woods. I'm with the Department of Assets, Information, and Services, and we are the um, department that oversees the uh, operations of the Chicago Riverwalk. Great. Thank you. Uh, did you want to make any further statements regarding this project? Uh, Larry did a great presentation. I think the only thing I would um, add out is that last year in 2019, we constructed the Community Marketplace to provide opportunities to minority and women owned businesses. And the community marketplace is immediately to the east of where the proposed elevator structure is going. And this would be a huge help for those small businesses who currently now make their deliveries at the Wabash uh, and Lower Wacker and have to walk all the way around. So they have a huge little, a huge walk to make to, to get their items to their kiosk. So this is gonna be a huge improvement and help for those small businesses. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Does any of the committee have any questions uh, of Michelle uh, or of Larry on this project? Seems pretty straightforward. Um, with that, with no questions uh, and uh, nobody wishing to further comment, I'd like to request a motion to adopt the staff recommendations for the project. I will move it because it is so needed, so. That's Commissioner Osmond moving that. Is there a second? Uh, second. Commissioner Hughes, I think you had your hand up as a second on this. Uh, I'll do the roll call, Perfect. Commissioner Djokovic. Aye. And I vote yes as well. The motion carries unanimously. Uh, hope you guys can get this thing built. Congratulations. Okay, uh, second item on the agenda is the property located at 1460 North Milwaukee. This is the Milwaukee Avenue District in the first ward, uh, Alderman La Spada. This is a proposed rehabilitation of a three-story frame mixed use building, including siding replacement, new storefront and a cornice. And Emily, I think this is yours. Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Um, so 1460 North Milwaukee was built in 1885 by Henry Sweet and is identified as potentially contributing in the Milwaukee Avenue designation report. Last year, a rezoning uh, to accommodate more residential units on the upper floors was approved. The building has been largely untouched for the past few decades. Uh, this proposal is for a full rehab, um, including new windows, side wall reconstruction, facade work, and interiors. Uh, the first floor will remain a commercial tenant while the upper floors will house five separate residential units. So sometime in the past, the original siding that clads the second and third floors was removed or covered over with a non-historic cladding, vinyl or aluminum. The applicant proposes to remove all of the existing siding and replace with new four inch lap exposure siding. Per the commission's wood siding repair and replacement policy, staff recommends the non-historic siding be removed from the front elevation of the existing building. Upon removal, historic preservation staff shall be notified to make a site visit to verify if any historic wood siding remains and if it can be retained or repaired. Uh, it, furthermore, if any historic details are uncovered during this time, uh, they should be documented and used to further inform the design and the permit drawings. Uh, if there is siding there and it can be repaired, uh, select areas need, uh, should be replaced in kind with wood. Um, and if the siding cannot be repaired, new wood clabbered siding shall be installed. Frame buildings within this district are extremely rare. The applicant has provided an old family photo showing a portion of the building as it looked historically. The design for the new windows and bay are based off of this photograph and give a good idea of what the original storefront windows and bay looked like. 
the applicant proposes to use copper and siding in the bay design uh, with ornamentation generally matching that found in the historic image. The windows will have a semicircular arch and decorative metal trim. Um, staff recommends that these new windows should be uh, double hung wood or aluminum clad uh, wood windows with clear vision glass. Um, the small non-historic window that is in the bottom left corner is going to be removed um, and a projecting copper cornice will cap the building. Uh, staff recommends that the design match the historic photo as much as possible and cornice and bay details shall be submitted with the permit application. So the building's current wood storefront appears to be original to the building, um, but based on the applicant's photos is in very poor condition requiring replacement. Uh, the applicant proposes to replace this storefront with a new aluminum storefront incorporating a transom and a limestone bulkhead. Because the current storefront is likely original, staff recommends the applicant match the configurations of the existing historic storefront. Um, aluminum may be used as a substitute for wood. However, limestone is not really found anywhere else on this building and staff recommends that the bulkhead be revised to metal panel um, and storefront details should be submitted with the permit application. Um, so the staff is recommending approval with the conditions I already stated. Um, I know the owner is here and the architect as well. Um, if you have any questions for them, the uh, Wicker Park committee and uh, the Alderman's office both uh, were very pleased with this project moving forward um, and uh, submitted letters of support. Thank you, Emily. Does the committee have any questions for Emily at this time? I don't see. anybody with questions. Uh, therefore, I'd like to ask the applicant if they'd like to make a statement with Benjamin. Are you available? Hello, committee. I am here. Thank you. Uh, this Hello, project if you is... state your name and organization, please. Uh, Benjamin, I could um... state your name and the organization. Benjamin Nykrug is my name, and, you and are I the... represent the, the, L, the uh, manager of the LLC, representing the ownership of 1460 North Milwaukee. Okay, thank and you. Well, we've, been, we've been working on this project for a long time, and uh, just in the working with the uh, folks, Mr. Kaminga and the Wicker Park Committee, uh, probably started close to 18 months ago already. Um, this is the last hurdle. So we are definitely eager uh, to get this project going. Um, I, I, I guess I'll uh, let the uh, architect talk uh, if he has any questions, but um, we, we will definitely try to uh, follow the profile. I'm glad we had that photo. A uh, little bit of concerns about the, the wood uh, in the uh, storefront because of the uh, um, Chicago being Chicago with the winters and the salt and everything, even, um, you know, a metal panel uh, with all the tagging in that area um, could be a concern, but hopefully we can come up with something that, that works for everyone. That's why we suggested the, the limestone. Um, we're actually going to uh, follow the limestone color uh, above uh, with the, uh, the siding and that will blend in as the, the copper age will look beautiful. And uh, we want to pick materials that, that are really work with uh, with the city and, 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 and the elements. And we are going to be here a long time and we don't want this building to um, go back to the current condition. Thank you. Uh, is your architect there? And is you... Yeah, I'm here. For the records, Arthur Kazmarek, uh, Bugai Architects, 1223 North uh, Milwaukee Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. Um, yeah, we agree with the recommendations. Um, the, like Benjamin has mentioned, the only concern is the bull, uh, um, is the new wall at the, um, at the storefront, just because we were worried about the salt that kicking, uh, kicking and vandalism over the, um, bulkhead, especially if it's on the, on the level, the grade level. 
um, of the street. So um, if it would be permitted, we would love to do the limestone bulkhead. If it's not, then uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to comply with what the recommend staff recommendation is. Well, currently the staff is uh, making um, do the metal uh, piece. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the architect or the owner? Having none, um, I'd like to request a motion to uh, approve the staff recommendations for this project. Oh, Sorry, Mr. I just wanted to, I, I didn't have a question. I just had a comment really quickly. Um, I really appreciate, there's a lot, there's a lot of like ornamental details from the original photo. And, you know, I really appreciate this family going the extra mile to incorporate those details um, and to pay homage to the original um, historic um, significance of this building. So I just wanted to put that out there before we take a vote. Um, really appreciate you guys going the extra mile there. Thank you, Commissioner Hughes. Okay, with that, I'd like to request a motion to approve the staff recommendations. Yes. Uh, I have Jackson. a question uh, for the commission. Oh, Commissioner Jeffries, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm wondering how the commission feels about allowing for some flexibility with the the stone base because I do think that that's a problem in the city um, and actually I know that Department of Planning Development when they get involved in projects not not historic ones like this but they allow they actually want a stone base or something more substantial because it does get damaged so I would say I would personally allow for that change if it's in keeping if it's in matching with the storefront above you know you have to look review the two materials together and not contrasting and it kind of blends, I think it makes sense to allow that. And we uh, will keep the profile as well. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Um, like Emily, do you want to respond to that, please? Yeah, I think that that's definitely something we can consider. Okay, so uh, based on the staff recommendation, so is that, um, could, could you bring up the staff recommendations again? And the, new windows, okay. Aluminum may be used as a substitute for uh, wood. Mm -hmm. However, limestone is not found elsewhere. So, are you, so Commissioner Jakovic, are you uh, suggesting changing um, Item number four on this. Yeah, I think to allow for some flexibility with the, you know, to allow some sort of cast stone or uh, base that uh, would be acceptable. Okay. Due to durability. Yeah. Uh, Emily, are, are you taking those notes? So is that a motion with that, Commissioner Jakovic? Uh, that's a motion. Okay. Is there a second on the uh, to second. Commissioner Hughes uh, second set. Commissioner Osman, your vote? Yes, I agree. And I'm in agreement as well. Uh, that uh, motion carries unanimously. Uh, good luck, folks. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Going. There you go. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yep. Thank you. As soon I, as bye. we get that permit, we're starting. Okay. <laughs> Love to see that going. Uh, the third and final uh, uh, project in today's agenda is the property located at 6851 South Bennett in the fifth ward. This is uh, Alderman Harrison's ward in the Jackson Park Highlands District. This is a proposed new attached garage addition to single family residence and an attached garage addition to a coach house on the corner lot. And Emily, if you could explain this project as well. Yeah, absolutely, Commissioner. Uh, so the subject property here is located on a large corner lot uh, at the intersection of Bennett and Six.
the F.B. Harriman residence. It was originally constructed in 1911 and has been largely untouched since then. The house is located, as I said, on a large corner lot. The main entrance to the home is off of Bennett. However, the existing driveway and curb cut are located off of 69th Street. The applicant's proposing to add a new one-story addition to the north side of the house, highlighted there in red. So the new addition will be approximately 19 feet by 19 feet with the mudroom extending along the north side of the house. To accommodate this new addition, the current mudroom is proposed to be demolished. A new mudroom will be constructed that will also serve as access to this new two-car garage uh, located behind the house. The new mudroom will be built on the original existing foundation and will not extend any further into the side yard than the original. It will be constructed out of frame and clad in stucco matching the remainder of the house and is connected with a narrower um, hyphen inset approximately two feet on each side. The design mimics very well the other one-story appendages the home has on the south and east ends of the house. Uh, staff recommends that the extending rafter tails on the new addition uh, have a simplified straight profile so as to have a very mild differentiation from the new work versus the historic house. So of other homes patched garages in the Jackson Park Highlands District. Uh, these are particularly common on buildings on corner lots such as this one. Uh, examples can be found above uh, among others. Because of the location of the home on the lot, any addition to the building will be visible from the street. Staff recommends, however, that the proposed location is the least intrusive and best uh, possible spot. Because of this and the district context, staff recommends approval of the new addition to the house. So the applicant is also proposing to add an addition to the south elevation of the coach house. Based on the historic photos, it appears that the coach house is original to the site and likely constructed at the same time as the house. The coach house currently houses two garage spaces on the first floor and a small residential unit above. So the Jackson Park Highlands District is unique from a lot of other districts that you guys have seen uh, in the sense that all elevations of all buildings are designated as significant features uh, in the designation ordinance. The proposed addition uh, will be located directly in front of the coach house as viewed from 69th Street and will house additional garage space to accommodate a wood shop with a new garage door to the west and a roof deck on top of, uh, on top. The, the facade that is proposed to be partially removed has original wood windows and some of the decorative half timbering on the second floor. So with this new addition, the first floor windows will need to be removed. However, they're going to be reused. Uh, they're proposing to be reused on the new south elevation visible from the street. However, the upper windows will not be reused um, because doors are proposed to lead to the new roof deck in their place. Uh, the applicant has utilized a narrower connecting room, um, it, but it still requires the removal of the facade beneath the windows and obscures almost the entire first floor from view. Staff does not recommend approval of this proposed coach house addition as it will remove the original historic material of the primary elevation and furthermore it will obscure views of the majority of the facade from the street. Uh, so this is just kind of to help you wrap your head around it. Uh, you can see the original coach house with that new construction shown in red. The applicant is proposing a number of other improvements to the property, primarily based on historic photos and plans. So sometime in the past, some of the original windows were removed and replaced with smaller muntinless windows. The applicant proposes to remove these and replace with new windows mimicking the original size, location, and arrangement. Staff recommends approval of the new replacement windows. Uh, final details should be submitted with the permit application. And then the last bit of work is on the east elevation. The applicant is proposing to extend an existing dormer approximately seven feet to the north with three windows matching the rest of the house. They're also proposing to remove the dormer's current window beneath the north chimney and the main dormer and replace it with a door and small balcony to serve as a fire refuge balcony. 
uh, both of these modifications will be almost entirely blocked from view by the main dormer and staff recommends that they are minimally visible and should be approved as proposed. And you can see in this, uh, this is the proposed elevation showing that dormer extended down and then the new dormer uh, to the north. So uh, with that being said, uh, staff recommends approval of this project with uh, the conditions mentioned. Um, and I believe both the owner and architect are here um, to answer any questions and I believe to make, uh, to make their case about the coach house. Great, thanks, Emily. Does the, uh, does the committee have any questions of Emily at this time? And seeing none, I'd like to ask uh, the owner and architect if they would like to make a statement. We would, thank you. Thanks. If you could state your name and your, uh, and just, you know, who you are. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we are Carolyn and Josh. We are the current owners of 6851 South Bennett. Great. All right. Oh, thank you. Um, so thank you so much for having us. Uh, so we, we do have the architect John Eifler with us also today. Um, we do have a brief presentation that Emily already kind of touched on a lot of the features of uh, that shows the, the commission historic images and blueprints of our home and the renderings of our proposed renovation. And can we move, like, the next slide? move forward? Um, it'll go through the, the, the scope. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, so we have two primary goals of this renovation uh, to restore historic elements to the home. Uh, as Emily showed, pictured in, uh, in 1910, the year construction was completed and to respectfully update the home to meet the needs of our modern family. Uh, it was important to us that we partner with an architect who would geek out with us over the house. And that's exactly what we found in John and his colleague, Jenny. Uh, so they've done tremendous work on both residential and commercial projects contemporary with our home and have won myriad awards from Landmarks Preservation Councils in the past. Uh, in all of our plans, uh, it was important to us to reference the original blueprints as we worked on updates. Um, in the past present front of house, here you can see the blueprint compared with the photo of the present state of our home. And can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Proposed work, as Emily observed, includes restoring the original profile windows in accordance with the blueprints restoring the historic flower boxes to the facade of the home and incorporating the current family entrance mudroom into a more open kitchen. A small three by three pop out will allow us to maximize functionality of the kitchen and incorporate a window done to original blueprint standards. In these comparative images, you can see that our future plans closely resemble the original aesthetic of the house. Yes, uh, the rear of, oh, this is Josh Heisey. I'm also uh, live at 6851 South Bennett. Uh, the rear of the house in blueprint and present form is shown here. Uh, next, uh, our proposed work to the rear of the house includes adding a two car attached garage with a green roof, which will allow us to make that the primary family entrance. We will also rebuild the historic flower boxes in the back. Uh, next, we here we show the past, present, proposed future from just inside the property fence. Next, uh, so with the coach house, uh, we are also proposing an addition to the existing coach house. Sadly, we do not have the original blueprints for the structure, but here is a current view of the property and the concrete slab that is currently where we're proposing an addition. Uh, next, uh, the proposed work is to incorporate a workshop space that will allow me to indulge in two of my passions, car restoration and now work around this 110 year old house. 
We will incorporate a green roof on the space as well to designate the addition as new to the building, but use historic elements that will keep the view of the coach house consistent with the street. I grew up working side by side with my father on childhood home, on our childhood home and cars and have a vision of doing the same with our future children. Again, we wanted to share the images of the historic current and proposed future property view from inside our fence. We will retain the visible foliage and you can see that the coach house is largely obscured from view. Next. Oh, that's this. So we can pause here so everyone can take a, a look. Yeah, so this is the, the foliage in the center that blocks the coach house currently. And it would remain. Um, and the proposed update that our neighbors are most excited about is an update to the fence. Uh, we plan to remove the existing six foot tall chain link fence and replace it with a much more welcoming wrought iron fence. Can you flip? Perfect. So this view shows the, the front of the house. And then if we can flip to that next view, uh, you can see uh, the view from the street, current and proposed. Wow. Uh, and then last slide. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're thrilled to be calling the Harriman House our home uh, and excited to invest in making it an amazing place to raise our family. Uh, we respectfully request that the commission adopt the staff's recommendations today, but eliminate the requirement the addition to the coach house not be allowed, uh, allowing us to build the proposed workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, is, uh, um, is John there? Yes. Also? Yes, I am. Did you want to make any comments regarding that, uh, sure. particularly uh, about the coach house addition? Uh, yeah. Um, I, first of all, I have to say that uh, working with uh, Joshua and Carolyn, um, they they're people who really understand the significance of historic homes and and their spot in the neighborhood as well. Uh, and what really hasn't been brought up is is the fact that. You know, so there's really two living units uh, going on here. Um, even though the city, for some reason, doesn't seem to like apartments and coach homes, which I hope they change their attitude towards. Uh, you know, they they need parking just like the house needs parking. So, uh, what they have currently is a sea of concrete uh, in the back of their home in order to accommodate the cars associated with the coach house and with the house itself. So the addition of the garage uh, is certainly fitting for you know, a, a connected enclosed addition uh, from the garage to the, the kitchen is certainly fitting for a house of the stature. Uh, the other two cars uh, can be associated with the uh, coach house, I think quite easily. And so the, their request uh, for this additional uh, workshop maintenance building, I think is, is perfectly fitting because uh, I think some of you might uh, view this as an excessive parking when in fact uh, it's not. So, um, and th then the other issue is I think the addition to the coach house is, is a minor um, uh, uh, alteration. Uh, it's uh, the kind of thing that, that happens in the back of the house. And I think with all the plantings and the like, uh, it won't, will not be even noticed uh, by the neighborhood. So uh, I uh, respectfully request that uh, they be allowed to build the workshop as well. Thank you, uh, John. Does the committee have any questions uh, for the applicant or the architect this time? I, um, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Osman. So my question would be, um, some of the staff's objection seems to be that because we're changing the windows on the second floor of the coach house and also because there's going to be a outdoor landing there, has any consideration been given to not doing the outdoor uh, enter, exit and have a, um, not have the kind of um, the fencing around it so that it's, it, you can keep the original windows? Um, yeah, uh, we have been in touch with the zoning department as well, and they would actually prefer to not attach the uh, new, you know, workshop to the coach house itself. So 
you know, this the scheme B, uh, as far as zoning is concerned, is just to build a separate building uh, about five feet away from the coach house itself, leave the coach house intact, and, uh, you know, just go from there. So um, that would be uh, the alternative to, to what we have. Yeah, that doesn't answer my question, though. I was just saying, um, in terms of what you've got right now, is that uh, part of the design that seems to be objectionable to staff is that because you've got a roof deck on the second floor, you've got a um, fence around, you've got a railing around it, and yes. then you also want to have doors that go out on, onto that patio. So if you took away the desire to have a second floor um, roof deck, and you made it simply a flat roof with the existing windows, would that change? Is that something you've considered and is that something that staff would consider? Well, I think uh, what I was alluding to, Lynn, was that um, zoning, uh, that deck would not exist, uh, that, the, that the workshop would be a separate building and that the existing south face of the coach house would remain intact unaltered. So the windows would remain uh, on the second floor as well. But if for the purposes of this discussion, um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, the terrace, if that's what you want to call it, was uh, something that was convenient uh, for the people living on the second floor. And if that is an objectionable thing to do to alter those windows, um, we can keep it the way it is. I would add just one thing that uh, the coach house windows have been modernized. I don't have a photo that shows that from this angle, but the historic uh, windows as seen in this um, original image, um, those are now modern vinyl windows that have a swinging function to them uh, that open in a kind of a unique L shape. Um, and at some point, someone previously removed those historic windows on that second floor. Unfortunately, we'd love to have the originals. Commissioner, well, I think to, to, to John's point, um, you know, Lynn, I would, uh, Commissioner Osman, I would probably say that probably the main concern that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, the main concern that uh, folks are uh, that the staff is objecting to is a removal of of material from that whole of that south side of the of the original coach house. Uh, so it, there's a whole series of things that occur there. So in the event, and this is what I was actually going to suggest was if you took away that um, connection. And built a, uh, a the wood shop or whatever that building was separate from the entire coach house. That would achieve everybody's uh, uh, issues, not only uh, this commission's issues in terms of uh, keeping the uh, the original coach house intact, but as John mentions, it would accommodate zoning's uh, issues as well. Right. Are there any further comments or questions? Does the staff agree with that recommendation? I think that that's um, an improvement. You know, our, our two main concerns was blocking the primary elevation, um, you know, from a, from a street view. Uh, but the other one, yes, was definitely removal of historic materials. And this absolutely gets rid of that, which would be preferred. Sounds like a good compromise to me. Um, I know, uh, Emily, you were saying that it's that it is going to block the street view, but I, I personally can appreciate them going the extra mile and picking um, materials and finishes that are complementary to the existing historic um, features that are there. Um, and then also there was a previous image that showed um, that that sort of elevation is already pretty blocked by the foliage um, and they intend to keep all of that. So I think uh, what Commissioner Wong is saying is a happy medium and I would, I would second him and agree with that recommendation. Yes, the, if I just might add, the workshop is basically built on what is now a concrete slab. 
So the the uh, all the uh, trees and, and the like would remain. So it, it would uh, be screened in the future from the street. Great. Um, okay. Well, uh, if nobody else would like to make a motion, I'm going to make the motion to uh, um, to approve the staff recommendations with the uh, item of of having a separate building uh, from the coach house as opposed to the connected building. That's the motion on the table. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by uh, Commissioner Hughes. Uh, Commissioner Osmond. Approved. I'm sorry, did you say yes? Yes. Okay, Commissioner Jekovic. Yes. Okay, that uh, motion is approved uh, unanimously. Uh, so, John, that's uh, Plan B. Um, I think that achieves everybody's wishes, um, and I think you're going to have a heck of a lot easier time in zoning as well. So, good luck with that, uh, and uh, good luck to you folks and in your future home. I think it's going to be beautiful. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you. With that, uh, I'd like to request a motion to adjourn. So moved. Anybody? <laughs> uh, and a second? Second. Second. And just say aye if you're approved. <laughs> mm -hmm. aye. 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 All right. See you guys uh, next month. Thank you very much for your service. Have a good uh, holiday. You Thank too. You.